Hey, Walter Sorrells back with another episode of Folding Knife Chronicles. Today, we're going to be making a die that will squash the shape for a little pocket clip for a folding knife. So in my last Folder Chronicles, I was talking about this little pocket clip that I'm working on in the design for this uh, folding knife that I'm, I've been working on for a while. Now, pocket clips are really simple things. You know, it's just a little piece of sheet metal stuck onto your knife. But they're actually a lot more complicated and have to do a lot more things than you might think initially. The first job of a pocket clip, obviously, is just to hold the thing in your pocket. But it's got to be firm enough that it'll hold effectively to your pocket and it won't fall out. But at the same time, it can't hold on there so tightly that you can't get it out. It's also got to have an area that has a little bit of clearance so that you can go over the seam for your pocket, which is basically four layers of cloth. You also have to have something in the front that like a little ramp swoopy kind of piece that will allow you to skate over the top of the cloth without piercing it or ripping up your pants or whatever. So um, you also have to have a little tab or something on the back that will allow you to hold it onto the knife. So typically that's just going to be, like I said, kind of a little tab or flat spot that's going to have a couple holes drilled into it so you can run screws into the body of the knife. That's actually a lot of stuff to do for this tiny little piece. And the solution is to have this kind of swoopy shape. So you got a flat part at the back, a little clearance section, and then a little swoopy thing at the front that will skate over the cloth and allow it to enter your pocket easily. A bunch of different things that you got to accomplish there. So in the knife I'm designing, my clips will start as a big flat sheet of 6AL4V titanium. Later I might try stainless steels and some other things, but not at the moment. Right now we're working with titanium. So they're milled out into little flat blanks. Now the first couple of prototypes that I made of this little part were bent with a hammer. That is not a long-term solution. So my whole theory of these knives is that I want to be able to batch the components, in other words, to do a whole bunch of components at a time, but not in such huge numbers that, you know, if I want to tinker with the design or whatever, I can do it and not waste, you know, tons and tons of parts. So I also don't want to do them in onesie twosies either because that's totally inefficient. So, I'll need a way to efficiently bend these little guys into shape. I want predictably formed parts every time. Uh, that's, you know, absolute baseline. So, quality is job one. Efficiency is, you know, the second goal. And flexibility is the third and more general goal for this little tool. So, the solution, I'm thinking, is to make a die that can be operated by hydraulic pressure on my hydraulic forge press. I uh, don't want it to be something that's going to take me weeks and weeks to do. It's got to be small, cheap, simple to operate, but it's got to do the job. That's the baseline. If it doesn't do the job well, it's not worth doing. So what I came up with was this. Basically two halves of a clamshell type of die that will squash the clips into shape. In theory, several at a time. The two halves will ride on four steel guide rods. Each guide rod will be surrounded by a coil spring, which I didn't bother to put into the little design here. And that coil spring will return the die to the open position after each operation so that you can put the clips in and out conveniently. My biggest concern is that as the squashing happens, I don't want the press to grab the part at any point in the middle of the operation and sort of suck it in there. If that happens, it'll mess up the indexing of the part. And so my original design includes a second pair of jaws, which will hold the clips parallel to the front of the die and keep them properly sized and indexed. As we'll see later, I kind of dropped that. So the quarter inch guide rods will go into holes that are bored a couple of thou under nominal to make for a press fit on the bottom die, and then about five thou over on the upper piece so that the top die will slide up and down easily. Don't want it to bind, but also I don't want it racking or flopping around. There's also a half inch diameter pocket on both sets of dies around each one of those little guide rods, and that's gonna contain the springs so they don't get smashed to bits during compression. 
My plan is to machine them on my Tormach using PTFE plastic, a type of plastic that's frequently used for cutting boards. If you don't have a bunch of this crap lying around in your shop, you just don't know what you're missing. I love using this stuff. It's very strong, but it's got a little bit of flexibility, it doesn't crack, and it has what engineers call high lubricity, meaning it's really slippery. It also machines beautifully, and you can just blast through it like butter. So if the design more or less proves out here, but you know, just needs a little tiny bit of tinkering, I can crank out one or several of these pretty quickly. Then, once the design's perfected, I can make another one from steel if and when the plastic one wears out. I have no idea how it's gonna hold up, so we'll see where we go with that. So the guide rod holes are drilled with a number seven drill. Then bored with an eighth inch end mill to the final dimension. Spring pockets are milled. And the main part of the die is roughed out. Finally, I'll use a quarter inch ball end mill in a parallel operation to mill the face of the die itself. And that'll give me a nice smooth finish. Then I'll basically repeat the same set of operations on the second die. Some springs from the hardware store. They're a little bit long, so I'll need to cut them down. I'll count the same number of loops on each one so that I cut them all to the same length and they'll all compress at the same rate. So here's how it all fits together. So I kind of came to suspect that I was overthinking this thing. So instead of having this little holding jaw that was going to be square to the front of the die and uh, I could do three or four at a time, I was thinking, okay, maybe it's just be easier to put little copper inserts on the jaws of a pair of lineman side cutters or vice grips or something like that. You know, I could get them in and out of there still really fast, do a whole bunch of them at a time, um, but I should be able to make them come out right too. Simple solution, less work, my kind of fix. Let's see if the whole thing even works. Oops, it's stuck. Why? Why? Well, first the good news. The part came out perfectly, so we got that. That's good. But dummy here forgot that I had meant to shorten the guide rods so that there was sufficient clearance that they didn't get squashed by the press. And yeah, have this happen. The good news is that there's no permanent harm to the die. The flexibility of that PTFE saved us here. So five minutes to replace the ruined guide rods and we're back in business. Trial number two works flawlessly. And the dies seem to be holding up okay. Let's see how they look after 20 or 100 or whatever of these. But so far, so good. If I can avoid remaking these things, hey. So all that's left is to test everything out on a bunch of different knives. Now I've got a posse of buddies who are knife guys and 
enjoy testing these things out. I'll distribute a bunch of prototypes to them uh, and they'll carry them around and abuse them and uh, hopefully everything will hold up okay. So far so good. I've put a couple of, uh, of them on knives that I'm carrying. Everything's working great, but uh, you want to put as much abuse onto something like this as possible before you launch it out into the world. So thanks for joining me in this continuing journey as I get this folding knife ready to take to market. Thanks and see you soon. Thanks for watching guys. If you feel like you got something out of this video, don't forget to subscribe. Also, click on the link to Patreon for a great way to give back to the channel. Plus, check me out on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. Links in the description. If you want something sharp and pointy, maybe a gift for yourself or one of the cooler people in your life, check out my Tactics Armory website and pick up one of our tactical or outdoor knives. And finally, if you want to learn to make hamons or Japanese swords, check out waltersorrelsblades.com where you can find videos about how I make hamons as well as forging, mounting, polishing, and fittings for Japanese swords. Thanks and see you soon!